So before going to that, let's discuss in brief the importance of papaya. So papaya is a plant with multiple uses and the most economic part is the fruit. This fruit is rich in proteins and vitamins A and C. So the vitamin A is good for the eye vision and the vitamin C increases the resistance of your body. Apart from this, the papaya fruit is also used industrially for the extraction of pepain and this pepain has a number of uses including the manufacture of cosmetics, the decoming of natural silk and food based applications like the clarification of the beer and the tenderizing of the meat products. Apart from fruit, the other parts like leaves and seeds are also used in traditional medicine for the treatment of boils, warts and freckles. And coming to India, the India stands forth in the production of papaya contributing to 12% of global papaya production. However, the papaya production is limited by a number of biotic stresses among which the diseases caused by fungi and the viruses are of utmost importance. So in this lecture we will be, dis we will be discussing about the fungal diseases that is foot rot or stem rot and anthracnose and the very important viral diseases like papaya ring spot and papaya leaf curl. So while discussing these diseases, we will be discussing about the economic importance of the disease, the etiology or causal agent of the disease, what are the favorable conditions under which these diseases are predominant and how you can diagnose the disease under field conditions and what are the management options you have for managing these diseases. So the first important fungal disease of papaya includes the powdery mildew. So the powdery mildew is a disease of foliage as well as unripe fruits. So as it affects the foliage, the foliage may lead to the premature defoliation of the foliage. Otherwise whenever the fruits are infected, the quality of fruits is completely reduced even the market value of the fruit is reduced. So, this disease known as powder mildew was first reported from Brazil in 1898. Since then it has been reported from different papaya growing areas of the world. And the yield of papaya is reduced by an Ascomycetes fungus which is known as Iodium caricae papier. That is the powder mildew is incited by Iodium caricae papier. So this belongs to the order erysiphales of the subdivision Ascomycotina. So the pathogen is capable of producing clistothecial stage as well as the conidial stage. The in its clistothecial stage is produced by the perfect stage of the fungus which is known as Erysiphae cruciferarum. So do you know about the Erysiphae and its characters? The Erysiphae is capable of producing many assay within a closed ascocarp which is known as clistothecium. And the different genera of powder mildew fungi can be divided based upon the clistothecial appendages. So here in case of Erysiphae, the clistothecium contains many assay and the appendages are of mycelloid type. So these are the important characters of Erysiphae which is capable of producing the closed ascocarp or the sexual fruiting body known as clistothecium. In its conidial stage, that is oidium, is capable of producing a number of conidia in chains. And these conidia are barrel shaped, 
They are produced on an unbranched conidiophore, which is an important character of iodium. So, let us know how this fungus survives during off season and how the disease is disseminated. So, the fungi usually survives as mycelium or clistothecia in infected plant debris. That is, the primary inoculum always comes from the infected plant debris. So, if the clistothecial stage is produced, the ascospores are capable of inciting the primary infection. In case, if the conidial stage helps in the survival, in such cases, the conidia serves as a source of primary inoculum. And the secondary inoculum contains wind-borne conidia. That is, these conidia are produced in favorable conditions where they are disseminated through the wind and they are capable of causing secondary infections. So what are the favorable conditions for the disease? We know that the cool conditions or the cool temperatures with high humidity are conducive for the development of powdery mildews. And as the cool conditions prevail from September to November, with a peak in October, the disease severity is peak in October and it usually prevails from September to November. Let us see what are the different symptoms that are produced by this pathogen. So the pathogen is capable of infecting all stages of the crop. Usually, ang leaves and unripe fruits are mostly infected compared to the older ones. Apart from these leaves and unripe fruits, the pathogen is also capable of causing powdery mildew on different other plant parts like your petioles, pedicels and even the pedicels. However, the disease is seen as specks or water soaked specks on lower surface of the leaf and under humid conditions you can observe the development of white powdery growth on the lower surface. So what does this white powdery growth contains? This white powdery growth contains the mycelium of the fungus on which there will be development of conidia force in which there will be production of conidia. So what are the symptoms that are seen on the upper surface of the leaf? As here the powdery growth are produced on initially on the lower surface on the upper surface you can observe yellowish spots or greenish yellow spots can be seen on the upper surface of the leaf. Under favorable conditions, even powdery growth is also produced on upper surface also under high humid conditions with cooler temperatures. Usually on the lower surface, the powdery growth is confined or it is mostly concentrated near the veins or the venal regions. So as the powdery growth increases, it leads to the necrosis of the leaf, thereby premature defoliation. So the symptoms can also be produced or the powdery growth can also be seen on the flower stalks and even the fruits that are incited by the pathogen. So as we know that or as we learned that this powdery growth is also produced on unripe fruits. On the unripe fruits the symptom can be seen as round or circular powdery growth initially on the immature fruits and gradually under high humid conditions these powdery lesions they grow over the entire surface of the fruit giving a powdery appearance to the entire fruit so what happens if the fruit is completely encircled by the powdery growth of the fungus you can observe deformation in the fruit so this deformation renders the fruit unmarketable it can be edible but the fruit has little or no market value. So how you can manage the disease? So for the management of the disease, you need to club certain cultural practices along with the chemical fungicides. The most important cultural practice is that whenever the disease is observed on different plant parts, they need to be removed and they need to be destroyed because these serve as a source of inoculum for causing fresh infections. 
and we know that the disease is severe under high humid conditions. That's why we need to ensure that proper aeration is seen in the crop canopy. Whenever there is proper aeration, high humid conditions doesn't prevail in the crop canopy, hence the germination of the conidia can be reduced or minimized. So we need to spray some chemicals. So some systemic fungicides like carbondazine can be sprayed at the rate of 1 gram per liter of water or you can also spray tridimiphon at 1 gram per liter of water. So these sprays need to be repeated at monthly intervals based on the severity of the disease. So some farmers they also grow these papaya plants under organic farming conditions. So can you use these systemic fungicides under organic farming conditions? No. So you have certain fungicides which can be used or recommended for the organic growers. These include elemental sulfur. So this elemental sulfur is highly specific for the management of powdery mildew which can be sprayed at a dosage of 2 grams per liter of water. Otherwise you can also spray certain salts like potassium bicarbonate at 10 grams per liter of water which can help in the management of the disease. That is, this disease can be managed by certain practices clubbed with certain fungicides. Even while going for new plantations or establishing new archers, you should see that proper aeration is seen in the archer and for this you need to plant the rows in north-south direction because whenever it is sown in north-south direction, the penetration of sun or the sun rays is good and there will be proper aeration that can be seen in your orchard so that the buildup of humidity can be reduced. Otherwise, the site of selection is also very very important for establishing new orchards. So you should select such sites which doesn't have warm climate and which doesn't have high humidity and there should be no much variation between the night temperatures and day temperatures.